So our soul is passions, desire, passions, desires. What else? Emotions. Emotions. Aspirations. Aspirations. <coughs> Memories. Memories. Okay, etc. It's two influences on our soul. Truth and error. I'm not saying love is an influence on our soul. Love is a, an emotion. I'm saying that truth and error is what influences and enters us emotionally. Right? Now, love is a truth-based emotion. Right? Hatred is an error-based emotion. You follow me? Fear is an error-based emotion. Wisdom is a truth-based emotion. Right? So there's all these different emotions. Now, the trouble with all of these emotions is they enter you emotionally. They're not thoughts, they are feelings inside of you. They're feelings that you feel. So, let's say when I'm one year of age, I'm screaming my lungs out because of something just happened to me, mm. and my mother or fa and father just leave me be mm -hmm. and they don't even hold me. Mm -hmm. What's my emotion? I'm, I'm not loved, abandoned. abandoned. <laughs> no. Now that emotion enters me mm. as a belief that I believe is true. Mm. I am abandoned. Rejected. Rejected. I'm no good. Right. I'm not worthy even to be picked up, right? Yeah. Now, these are not thoughts. No. Because at one, how, how many really combined thoughts and clar clarified thoughts do we have? Very few, right? We have these feelings that were coming. And the feelings often came from our parents. They were purposely rejecting us. Or they were purposefully abandoning us. In their mind to teach us a lesson. Or in their mind, do you know what I mean? To, to teach us something. But in the end, we, okay. we feel those emotions. They entered our soul and they became our truth. Do you know what I mean by that? They became what we now believe to be the truth about ourselves. And then, from that moment, we began acting upon them. We began believing them to be true, of course, because they were the truth of that moment. We were abandoned, we were rejected, we were left alone. Right, right at that moment. It was the truth then. So, this truth entered us, but now it's, it's become error. In the sense that now, it's staying within us and it guides every single thing we do. Every single thing that happens to me is attracted to me because I have these feelings in me. So, what kind of a relation do, do I attract? I attract relationships where I'm going to get rejected. Yeah. Because I have a feeling inside of myself of rejection <coughs> that I don't want to feel. And because I don't want to feel it, I am now going to be putting it out there to the universe, right? That's the law of attraction at work. And the law of attraction now is the motion of rejection. Reject me, reject me, reject me. Reject me. Goes out to the universe. And you know what? You have a great big long line of people, and if you're a woman, a great big long line of men who are going to reject you in a relationship. Lining up at your door. <coughs> And you'll say, men are mongrels, men are mongrels. <laughs> like, this is the fifth man that's rejected me, right? But what is they? We're still holding on to it. We're still holding on to this emotion of <coughs> rejection. <coughs> and we, can't, we don't need to condemn ourselves or judge ourselves for it. It happened in, in a truthful environment. It, happened, it, it really happened to us at some point in our life where we were rejected. We were abandoned, right? But now it's come to define our life. So quite often when I'm talking to people, I'm saying to them, you have this emotion or that emotion, and they feel that that's a judgment straight away. But if you could liken it like this, imagine your soul is a nice crystal ball, nice and clear. You imagine just a big crystal ball, you see straight through it, beautiful, all light flows through and is reflected by it. Imagine that. And then imagine someone comes along and throws a heap of mud at it. Right? Mm. What light gets through it now? Very, very little. Now, 
you need to decide that you're going to wash off the mud. You have control of that. It is your soul. It is your free will. Right? No one else can do that for you. Even the people who threw the mud at you can't take that mud off of you now. Right? You need to decide to do it. Because it's entered you as emotions in the soul that you now to believe to be truth. And that's where you're going to need courage to actually allow yourself now to experience those emotions that you locked up inside of yourself, which has become the mud that defines your life. Yeah. And when you do that, what will happen then is that you will have the ability to feel all of your own emotions without being afraid of any of them. Mm -hmm. And when you can do that, you can feel God's emotions without being afraid of any of them either. And then you have the ability to grow and become a one with God using that technique. Right? But if you decide that this mud defines you, you're going to become very attached to that mud. Yeah? And so when, I, when somebody says to you, oh, you know, Peter, you've got this little issue, you know, where, where you know, you're not very emotionally sort of connected with people. And what I do is say, hang on a sec, what's, he's talking about me, right? <laughs> he's talking about me, and how, how, you know, how dare he do that? And what do we do then? Is we go ahead and just defend the castle that we've created. Don't we? And so every single thing that comes across for it, law of attraction, every man that comes into my life in this case, rejects me. So what do I do? Every new man I'm really suspicious of now. Right? He's going to reject me. He's going to re I'm looking for times when he's going to reject me now, right? Aren't I? Because I am so now suspicious and so guided by trying to prevent this that I am actually now in the state where I'm trying to intellectually determine whether somebody's going to direct it, reject me. And you know what? The truth is, yes, he's going to reject you because of that emotion in you. That's the only reason why. Yeah? So is it then important to get back to the very first time that that belief came into your mind? Is that because if you're one, or maybe if you're only three months old, for instance, that happened, and you're working through, trying to work through those issues, is it important to actually know what instance that actually happened? I mean, Firstly, the belief did not enter your mind. Right. The belief, the belief was an emotion that entered your soul. So firstly get that. Now, if that's the case, then the mind is really unnecessary, isn't it, in this process? Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. Because the belief, the feeling, yeah, the emotion is in your soul. Yeah. So you will need to feel that emotion in the soul. You won't need to think how it got there. You won't need to know even the occasion it got there. But most of the time, the memory which is in your soul, will probably appear to you when you allow yourself to feel the emotion. So, like, like Gloria mentioned earlier, that she actually traced some things back and she could feel these feelings that came from, from when she was in mum's womb even. Now, obviously, she didn't have any thoughts at that stage. They were just feelings hitting her. And allowing yourself to feel the feelings, you'll know the source. Is it also important... Um, does one... Is it... Is it important to be able to to name the emotion? Because it, sometimes the emotion is just, right. a, is just a feeling. And it's, is it important to say, well, now, what is this feeling? Now? <laughs> you know what I mean? And like our desire to like name it. an emotion generally comes from our intellect wanting to understand. Mm -hmm. However, when we begin, knowing the emotion can sometimes be very helpful for us to connect with it emotionally. So my suggestion is do whatever is going to help you feel the emotion. So if naming it helps you feel it, go ahead and name it. Mm -hmm. okay. Right? So if you can naming it actually um, blanket it too? As well oh, as well certainly. As well. I can say, yeah, I felt uh, you know, unworthy then. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. I've acknowledged that I felt unworthy. But mm -hmm. has it done anything yet? No, because I still have the unworthy emotion, the unworthy mm -hmm. feeling is inside of my soul. It's not going to come out until I, until I experience it. Till I feel it. 